chatting to cumulative frequency diagrams. Um, before we start, just a reminder that there is a notes chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so um, in this question we've been told a farmer weighs 120 of the pigs on his farm and the table below shows their weights. Now the first thing to notice here is that um, all of the weights are in groups. This is grouped uh, frequency table, um, meaning that the eight people, uh, or the frequency of eight, means there were just eight pigs who were between zero and 100 kilograms. We don't know anything exact about them, just that it was somewhere between zero and 100. Um, now, it asks us to draw a cumulative frequency graph to represent this information. So the first thing we need to uh, deal with is what cumulative frequency actually means. Um, the word cumulative means to accumulate, to build up. And so um, when we're talking about the frequencies, we're actually keeping a running total as we go through the list. And so the first cumulative frequency is exactly the same as the frequency, it is eight. But then from now onwards, we're going to keep adding on as we go down the frequencies. So we're going to add on the 20 to give us 28. We'll add on 28 to give us 56. We'll add on 48. That will give us 104. And we'll add on 16. And that will take us to 120. Now, a little thing to have a look at here is just making sure that we have got the correct value at the end of the cumulative frequency. This value is 120. That is telling me that in total, there must have been 120 items in the table. And if we go back to the start, we were told there were 120 pigs. So we have got the correct number in this case. Next, what we're looking to do is actually just um, draw ourselves a graph. And so, as it's a graph, what we're looking to do is draw some points. And so, we're going to take the values along the bottom, which are the weights, and our cumulative frequency are going to be our y-axis values. Now, again, one thing to notice here, we have got um, a group. So, where do we plot our points? So, we've got a couple of options. We could plot it at zero, which will be the start of the group. We could plot it at 100, which will be the end of the group, or we could actually go right in the middle at 50, um, as it's the midpoint of the group. The important thing with cumulative frequency diagrams, it is always the upper value of the group. And the reason for that is a cumulative frequency diagram says basically that there are eight pigs who are 100 kilograms or less. There are 28, uh, 28 pigs who are 200 kilograms or less, and so on. And so we always plot at the top end of the group. So our first one is going to be 108. And so we'll mark a point on our graph. We're then going to have 228, a little point on the graph. 356, 400, 104, and 500, 120. And there are our points. So the next thing to uh, just be careful of here is how do we then join those points together? Well, because this is grouped data, we don't actually know what is happening exactly between each of the points that we've just plotted. And so we have to use a curve in order to join them together. And so with a smooth line, we join all of our points together. Now, the other thing that we do need to think of is just where this graph should actually begin. Now, the key here is that we know the absolute minimum value must have been zero. So we know no, uh, none of the pigs weighed less than zero kilograms, obviously. And so we can actually start our graph at zero, zero. And we will do that by just joining it on here. The shape of the graph is very important. Um, the, uh, any cumulative frequency graph generally will have a shape like an S. That is the, uh, what you're generally looking for with a cumulative frequency diagram. Basically, things generally increase quite quickly in the central area of the graph here, 
and then they tail off here and they only rise quite slowly at the start and so it forms the, L, uh, the S shape that we began with. Okay, so now we're going to go to um, actually using the cumulant frequency diagram in order to read some values from it. Um, and so we've been told that in this case, the cumulant frequency graph shows the information about the heights in centimetres of 60 students. We're going to try and find an estimate for the median and interquartile range for the heights of these students. Now, in this case, the key word actually here is the word estimate. We aren't going to be exact here because we don't know of enough information about each value. All we do know is that the median is the middle point in the data set. And so previously you may have used a formula n plus 1 over 2 to find the position of the median. We don't need to do that in this case because that's, uh, it's adding in a little bit of extra accuracy that we're actually not needing because of the estimate. So all I need to do to find the median, I've got 60 people, well I'm just going to half that to find where the median would be. It would be the 30th person. And so, all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my cumulative frequency axis, and I'm going to find the 30th person, and I'm going to draw a line straight across until it hits the graph. If I want to read the value off, all I then have to do is draw a line straight down. And then from that, just read from the scale what the value would be. So in this case, the median is positioned right here. And each of those little squares is worth one. So we're looking at 153 centimeters. Now, the quartiles. We'll, as for the interquartile range, the first thing we need to be thinking about is we need an upper quartile and we need a lower quartile. Now again, you may have used uh, formulas like n plus 1 over 4 and 3 brackets n plus 1 over 4 in order to find uh, the lower quartile and the upper quartile, but we don't need to worry about that in this case either. Because it's an estimate, we just need to think about finding a quarter of the way. So our lower quartile is just going to be 60 divided by 4, the 15th value, and the uh, upper quartile is just going to be 3 lots of 60 divided by 4, so that is going to be the 45th. And so, same as before we did with the median, we're going to find the 15th value on our graph, and so 15th in our cumulative frequency, draw across and draw down, and the 45th, draw across and draw down. And so we now can just read off the values from those two points. The lower quartile is sitting at around 140. Two, and the upper quartile at around 158 and so if I want to find the interquartile range well that is going to be 158 take away 142 which equals 16 and again that's also centimetres. Now, using exactly the same graph and the same information, um, we're now going to be looking at finding proportions. Now, with a cumulative frequency diagram, you may be asked to find a proportion, a fraction, a percentage. All of these uh, things are just to do with um, finding how, how many of the total number of people fit into a certain category. So in this case, we've been asked to find an estimate for the proportion of students who are over 160 centimetres tall. Now, if I'm going to do that, I need to be thinking about 160 centimetres tall. That means I'm looking at the height. I need to move to 160 on the graph and this time draw up and read across. What this is telling me is a number of people, a frequency. And what it's saying is that value there is 48. 
And so, reading from what a cubic frequency diagram actually says, that means that 48 students are 160 centimetres or less. Now, this one was asking for people who are over that amount. And so what we're actually interested in are the people who are at the top of this graph. There are 12 further people. If we're looking for uh, that as a proportion, well, that is 12 out of something. Well, there were 60 students, so it's 12 out of 60, which is actually exactly the same as a fifth. And if we wanted to, we could convert that into a percentage. We could say that 20% of all of the students are over 160 centimetres tall. In the second piece, I'm just going to uh, remove the elements from my graph. So we're going to find an estimate for the percentage of students who are between 140 and 150 centimetres tall. So again, this is all about heights. And so we need to know how many people are in each category. So we draw up from 140 and we read across. We draw up from 150 and we read across. And now we just need to work out how many people that is actually showing. So the first one, well, that is 13. And the top one is 25. Now it was asking how many are in between um, 140 and 150 centimetres tall. So we've got a difference here of 12 again. And so in this case, it's 12. It asked for a percentage. Well, that is going to be 12 out of 60. And if we want to convert that to a percentage, exactly the same as we have above. In fact, we have 20% again. And finally, we come to um, the exam question. It's the Edexcel paper, November 2017, higher paper three. So we can use a calculator if we want to at some point during this question. And in this case, the cumulative frequency graph shows information about the weights of 60 potatoes. Use the graph to find an estimate for the median weight. Now, we have 60 potatoes. If I want to find the median, well, that is going to be halfway. So 60 divided by 2 is going to be 30. And so I'm looking for the 30th value in my graph. And so now going up the cumulative frequency to the value of 30, drawing a line straight across and a line straight down well that is giving me a weight of 57 grams and that would be my estimate for the median then we're saying uh, jamil says 80 take away 40 equals 40 so the range of the weights is 40 grams is jamil correct you must give a reason for your answer now, this is a very common style of question you'll find in the GCSEs. Um, what he said seems very, very sensible. Um, we've got a mark here for the biggest value being 80 and a mark here saying that the lowest one is 40. So that would suggest that the range is 80 take away 40. But generally, the actual, uh, the actual answer to a question where it asks, are they correct, is generally no. And in this case, it's another one of those situations. The answer is no, because we don't actually know for certain that 80 was the highest value and that 40 was the lowest value. Everything here has come from group, grouped frequency. And so that highest value, yes, it may have been between 70 and 80, but the biggest one may well have just been 71. We don't know. All we know is that it was in the group 70 to 80. So in this case, no, and the reason that it's no is um, we don't know exact values. And finally, in part C, show that less than 25% of the potatoes have a weight greater than 65 grams. So, this is another case where we need to actually find some values from our graph. This time it's about the weights. And so we're going to use the x-axis this time, the weights axis. 
and we'll find 65, draw a line up to our graph and then read that value across. Now, for my graph here, that is looking to me like 48. Now, if that is 48, that tells us that 48 potatoes weighed 65 grams or less. This is about greater than 65. So what we're actually interested in here is what is happening beyond that point. It is telling me that there are 12 uh, potatoes which are over um, 65 grams and it's 12 out of 60. Now again, um, it's very similar to the previous example. We've got 12 out of 60 uh, potatoes being more than 65 grams. Well, if we want to turn that into a percentage, we could do this straight on a calculator by just multiplying by 100, or we could simplify first and then take it up to 100. It is 20%.